a, a, a weird, you know, vi vi uh, uh, kind of something that is not understood in a way by the medical scientists at this point, but it's a variable, it's there, but it, it's no reason to kind of look at it because it doesn't make sense, you know? Oh, well, okay, here's, here's the problem. Number one, is it real? Well, here's a fact. So this is, so this is a fact statement, how real it is. It is fully established that one-third, one-third of all medical healings are strictly due to the placebo effect. Hmm. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Now, you say, well, what, what, how much do we know about the placebo effect? And the answer is hardly anything. Yeah, exactly. And I say, why not? <laughs> it, it seems to be very important. <laughs> and if one-third of the people heal themselves with a positive effect, we really should ask this question. If one-third heal themselves with positive thinking, how many people get sick because of the nocebo negative thinking? Mm. Well, obviously, it's got to be most of them at some degree, yeah. and, and because most of us are thinking negative thoughts about our abilities to be uh, strong and healthy. And, and, so, and then you say, but why isn't medicine studying this? Well, number one, at least in the United States, I can tell you exactly why. There's no research on this, and the reason is, it's not in the interest of the drug industry to study this. Hmm. Because if you could heal yourself with your mind, then who's going to buy the drugs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And so, you know, it, it, you want, it's the same reason as this. Because uh, Answer this question, for example. Are, are you familiar with the, that there are many more efficient ways to create energy on this planet other than using fossil fuel? Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. And I say, then how come we're not using them? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and the answer is, it's not in the interest of the industry that sells oil. Sure, that's right. So then I say, it's not in the interest of the industry of the pharmaceutical company to let you know that you can heal yourself without drugs. And it's no reason for us to sit around and waiting for uh, them to change this, right? Right. That's why it's time for us to start knowing who we are and put the power back into our own hands. Yeah. We've always been powerful, but we bought beliefs from the time we were children. That the, the kind of beliefs that who do we think we are? Like a parent would say, "Who do you think you are?" And then we, as a child, will say, "Nobody." <laughs> and the answer is, "Yes, you're. You know, you you're not powerful." It's interesting in. Uh, Australia and New Zealand, they actually have a term for this uh, uh, disempowering activity. They, they call it cutting the tall poppy. Mm -hmm. And what that means is if you plant poppies, like a whole row of poppies, all of the poppies' flowers grow up and they're all about the same height. But every now and then, some poppy goes like a foot or two higher than all the other poppies. Mm -hmm. So the gardener it cuts the tall poppies so that they're all the same height. Hmm. And so when they say this in Australia and New Zealand about child development cutting the tall poppies, what they're saying is if a child expresses things that are beyond the ordinary, then the nature of the parent is to repress that, cut that ability away so that the child becomes average. Hmm. And, sure. and so we, when, it, when a child expresses uh, powers, uh, the tendency of the community is to actually make them average by denying their powers or making them ashamed of their powers or afraid of their powers so they they, they don't exercise them. Hmm. You know, and, uh, and hmm. we lose these powers because of that. Exactly, and and, uh, and in your book you have a, have a chapter called uh, Parental Life Experiences Shape Their Children's Genetic Character, and this is fascinating. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? But yeah, this, this is this is the fun stuff. This is, uh, part of the book was based on my research from 40 years ago. I was working on stem cells, and it's interesting because today people think stem cells are something brand new that just came about recently. Mm -hmm. And the fact was that my experiments, I, I was fortunate enough to work with the primary scientist who, who actually cultured and cloned uh, stem cells. So I got, I got my training from this this brilliant scientist about stem cells, but what was interesting about it is that I would isolate a single stem cell and put it in a petri dish all by itself. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, when the cell would divide, then it would make two stem cells, and then they would divide, and there'd be four, and eight, and 16, and pretty soon there were thousands of cells in the culture dish. Mm -hmm. but, but the important part is every cell was genetic.
genetically identical to all the other cells because they came from the same parent. Mm -hmm. So they were like all identical twins. And, and my first experiments that, that sort of blew my mind was I, I took a, a culture of identical cells and split it up into three Petri dishes. And in each Petri dish, I put a different growth medium, slightly different con uh, in constituents or stuff in the growth medium. Mm -hmm. So I had three different culture media. And I had the, the I put uh, the cells in the three dishes, each one with a different media. And what happened was, in one dish, the cells form muscle. The other dish, the cells form bone. And the third dish, the cells form fat cells. Well, the, the interesting fact is, but all the cells were genetically identical when they were put in the dishes. Mm -hmm. So I say, well, why did one become muscle and one become bone and one become fat? And the answer was, not because of the genetics, because they were all genetically the same. Hmm. The reason why the cells became different is because they were put into different environments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they said, well, wait, uh, because at that time we were very much in science talking about genes control life, and my experiments said, wait, the control is not by the genes, the control is by the environment, mm -hmm. because that was the only thing that was different. Hmm. So I started to trace this and came across the mechanisms by which the environment information actually changes the genetic readout. Hmm. So uh, this was uh, this was pioneering studies. I was only one of many, but I have you know I'm very happy to have been there early in the game to see this. Hmm. But it has led to a whole new field of science. The new field of science is called epigenetic hmm. control. Yeah. Now, now, what's different about it? There was an old field of science that most everybody in the audience has been trained with. That old field was called genetic control. Mm -hmm. well, genetic control, in English, when you put it, it means control by genes. And I say, yeah, but what's epigenetic control? Well, the prefix epi, epi is the Greek uh, prefix for above. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I say epigenetic control... Literally, that says control above the genes. Mm. Well, this is the new science, and why is it important? It says genes are blueprints like potentials. Genes are potentials. But the new mechanism, epigenetic control, is what selects the genes and selects the potential. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and the, so the control was not in the genes. The control is above the genes. And what's above the genes? It, above the genes is the mind. Hmm, yeah. The mind of the cell or the mind of the human is what selects our genes and can change the, the gene, the readout of the gene, the gene activity. Here's what's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Old science. A gene is a blueprint. That's what the old science is. It's a blueprint to make a protein. A protein, the, the body, the building blocks that make our body, the building blocks that give us our shape and our behavior, those are called proteins. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so to make these very complex molecules, the DNA is a blueprint to make these molecules. Well, now with the new science, it says this, is that with epigenetic control, you can take a, one of those genes, one blueprint, and you can make over, listen to this number, 30,000 different variations from the same blueprint. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What that means is, we used to think genes are defining who we are, but the new science says that our mind can lead to 30,000 variations of every gene, hmm. which means all of a sudden we're not limited by the genes, we're only limited by the mind. Hmm. That's fascinating. So, so the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, what I was actually go w wanted to ask you, just uh, sneak in here, uh, b because you mentioned stem cell research, and there was this uh, recent thing uh, where someone from the, let's see here, what does it say, University of Wisconsin used actually a, a virus, uh, uh, added a virus to four uh, different skin cells and actually turned skin cells into stem cells. Did you hear yeah. about this? Let's, let's, yeah, of course, it's very important, because let, let's explain something about a 